Welcome back. Um, last we left off, we were still ascending in the Delta Glider to a stable orbit so we can dock with the Aero Freighter. And I promised to talk about why the moon is pretty awesome. And since, well, we have nothing to do for now, I guess I'll talk about it. Um, so our moon is fairly large in comparison to the Earth. And, I mean, you might think that's kind of, you know, that's, that's okay, because our planet's kind of small, especially in relation to, you know, the other planets, but, um, so, you know, any moon would be, you know, large in comparison, but if you think about it, all the other moons, um, you have, you know, okay, so Mars... Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos, are really, really tiny, like a few hundred kilometers in diameter. And Mars isn't that small of a planet. I mean, it's pretty small, but its moons are tiny in comparison. And the moons of Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune, although they might be big, their host planets are even bigger and ginormous. Um, unbelievably so, like, I mean, the pictures of Earth next to Jupiter are just mind-blowing. And so, it's very rare for a planet to have such a big moon. Um, the only one that rivaled, um, percentage-wise, was um, Pluto and Charon, or Charon. And they're no longer planets, but dwarf planets, which... Okay, fine. I'll accept begrudgingly. Um, CGP, di CGP Grey did a really good job of convincing me to accept that. So, um, Pluto and Charon, really, you know, really close in size. Um, and our moon is actually so massive in comparison to the Earth that they you c can't really say that the moon is orbiting the earth um so jupiter has a moon io and it's you know orbiting jupiter and you can say it's orbiting jupiter because although io is pulling a little bit on jupiter jupiter is so massive that the it doesn't wobble very much just in relation to io like, it'll wobble a little, little bit. Physics says it has to wobble a little bit. But, um... But the point at which Io is orbiting is well inside of Jupiter. The same cannot be said for the Earth-Moon system. Um... The Moon is so massive that the point, the very center of the system, the center of gravity for the Earth-Moon system is actually outside of the Earth's surface. Which means that when the Moon is on one side of the Earth, when it moves to the other, the Earth itself will wobble such that it moves entirely... Ah, I fail at describing without pictures. Um, and I can't really draw pictures on orbiter. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll use this. So, here is the Earth at one point in the Moon's orbit. At the next point in the Moon's orbit, the Earth will be entirely set outside. So, there'd be no point of this new Earth that intersects with the old one. If that makes sense at all. So, the point at which the Moon orbits the Earth is actually outside the Earth's surface. Which means that the Earth is also orbiting the Moon. And... You could think of it that way because, I mean, if the moon is orbiting a point outside the Earth's surface but is orbiting the Earth, you could think of the Earth orbiting a point outside of the moon's surface but is still orbiting the moon. And this is also very, very rare. Again, the only other candidate for this was um, Pluto and Charon, but like I said, they're not planets. So that's just mind-blowing how unique our um, system is. Uh, another thing... Okay, we have achieved orbit, so... 
Hang on. Yay! So let's set this up so I don't miss anything. Um, yep, we need to go positive. Um, another thing that's crazy unique about... Uh, dang it, I missed that. Um, that's crazy unique about the moon is it isn't really orbiting the Earth at all. And I'll talk more about that here in a bit once I... Dang it, I fail at time using time compression res er, time I fail at using time compression responsibly. That's the word I was looking for. Um so you would think that with the Earth being so close to the moon that you know, we affect it quite a lot. And we do. I mean, we have it in our clutches. I mean, it's kind of like a nefarious way of saying it, but, you know, we're co-orbiting each other. So, you'd think that at least we're a double planet system, maybe, you know, orbiting each other. But, in reality, the sun has more of a f an effect on the moon than the Earth does. And I think it's, up, I think it's um, twice the gravitational pull on the moon the sun does. Which means that we, like the moon isn't really in our orbit at all. It's in the sun's orbit. Which is also mind-blowing. So if you're, I mean, so there's that. Okay, hang on. I need to keep doing stuff. Um, target this. Need to go prograde. Um, do I want to just sit here and wait until we're lined up? I will, actually. Well, that was not good. Thus, don't c time compress too much. Um, so another thing that makes the moon really awesome and argues for a kind of double planet system is the moon's orbit in relation to the sun. So for things like Io in orbit of Jupiter, Io is, uh, um, you know, you, you would expect Io, since it's, you know, relatively close to Jupiter in relation to Jupiter's orbit of the sun, that the, like, say this is th the orbit of Jupiter, the yellow one around the sun, Io's orbit would be kind of like this. You know, it would make these little corkscrew things all around the sun, which it does. And that's, you know, typical of a moon around a planet. They just make little corkscrews because at at one point in their orbit or in their motion around the sun, they will be going against the planetary orbit and they'll be going against it fast enough that they will actually be backtracking in relation to the sun. And you may know where this is going, but the moon doesn't do that. The moon orbits Earth you know, or I guess we co-orbit. I'll just keep the old vernacular. So the moon orbits Earth every, you know, about 13 times in a year. Which means that if you divide up the, well, now I've just messed up my circles. <laughs> you divide up this, this gray circle. I'm going to, oh, I can't no frame that. Um, I don't know of anything else with a circle on it. Docking? Okay, here we go. <laughs> so you divide up this circle. So this, this, this gray, outer gray circle is the orbit of... Um, yeah, hang on. I can't think and talk at the same time. Sorry. I'll get back to you on this. After I do this. Da, 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 da. That is taking a long time. Okay, I'll just go backwards. Um, so, you divide this circle. So this outer circle is the Earth's orbit around the sun. Okay? You guys can see that? Okay, good. So, you divide this into 13 segments. 
um, to make a 13 agon? I am not sure about the name of that, but um, 13 segments to make a 13-sided um, polygon. And the moon orbits the Earth only once between each vertex of that um, shape, which means that at no point in the moon's orbit is it actually backtracking its motion around the sun. In fact, it's not even getting close to backtracking its orbit around the sun. Its v orbital velocity changes from like 0.98 um, of what it's, or 98% of what you'd expect it to be to, you know, 102% of what you'd expect it to be, which th that margin is so ridiculously tiny that it's safer to say that the Earth is just kind of, you know, slightly affecting the moon's orbit of the sun. Um, that in relation to, or that in conjoinment with how, oh, excuse me, how the sun has more, oh, wow, we are, we don't need to, intersecting is for losers. We're already within docking range. Anyway, that in con conjunction with how the sun has more of an effect on the moon than the earth does, kind of puts it into a nether state between planet and moon, which I think is just amazing. Um, I'm going to provide links to where I got all this information, so you know I'm not just like a crackpot. Uh, this isn't going to work. Um, I'll put that in the description, or the doobly, doobly do. That's a, that's a difficult word to say. John Green says it so easily. Um, hey, <laughs> we're all lined up. Um, so I'll put links so you can ver or at least see where I got my information. But when I read that, my mind just exploded with awesome that the moon might be able to be considered its own planet. I mean, it's big enough, bigger than Pluto, bigger than Ceres, bigger than. Uh, I think it's bigger than Sedna, even. Bigger than Eris. Bigger than... A lot of places. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was super cool. And it gave me something to talk about while we complete the umpteenth docking maneuver of this series. Um, if you guys don't want me to you know, do the whole getting into orbit and docking thing anymore, then I can just skip over them in my videos and start at, you know, whatever is exciting, uh, or what, what would count as exciting. Um, I am inclined to not want to do that because, I don't know, it's just kind of, I mean, getting into orbit is half the fun of Orbiter. Okay, not really, but... I mean, it is a big part. Translation. And so I'm going to get even with the aero freighter. You can see it there. That's kind of a cool picture. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Um, null relative velocity with the uh, freighter. You may want. You may be tempted to try the null relative velocity MFD for this, but it only uses the RCS. I think it only uses the RCS. To the best of my knowledge, it only uses the RCS system, which means that it would be take a long time to get to zero from you know 70 meters per second. So here we go. Now we can do it. I believe it was Pro 500 spec zero. Null relative speed. So execute. And there we go. So here we are. There's us. There's the ship. And it is here that I shall continue. Oh, there's the moon. Our target. Which also means that we'll have to wait until about three fourths of an orbit to get to the moon again. So I'll see you next time.